pleasure to meet y'all at last, and welcome back to Nerf Secrets Revealed. So, let me get on into today's episode by talking about a couple things about blasters that don't feature triggers. Because if you're not familiar with the 2018 Rev Reaper blaster from the Zombie Strike lineup, then well, let me break it down to you. The Rev Reaper was a more recent adaptation of what used to be a pretty outdated design. Simply used that triggers would be a much more valuable asset in any blaster nowadays. Hasbro would decide to try and bring that design back into motion with the Rev Reaper. A manually operated flywheel blaster in which that you use a pump on the bottom or something to crank the gears that would turn the flywheels and then upon pushing the pump forward it would allow you to release a projectile, whatever it may be. This wasn't the first time that something like that had taken place. There were non-trigger blasters way back in the day as well. If you're not familiar with a few other end strike blasters out there, then well, let's just see to that that other blasters out there, like the blasters that release green balls, including the buzz saw and the rip saw, and a few other blasters out there. Those kind of blasters out there didn't necessarily have the types that it would probably need. They also had manually operated flywheel systems in and of themselves, but of course, the buzzsaw, for example, being that it had a large, long blue handle on the back, which would allow for the blaster to be manually operated on its flywheel system, as well as the 2001 Gyro Strike. That was another innovation right there. It also utilized a similar sort of manually operated flywheel system. But you know what? I feel like I'm getting off track here. Because I mainly come in here to talk about non-trigger based blasters because it seems that throughout recent history that kind of design that has been somewhat flawed not having a trigger on a blaster at all it seems to be getting very common. Because we've gotten lots of blasters especially ones that are bow based that don't feature a trigger on them. And I could pretty much accept that these bow blasters out there, like the straddle bow, or the lightning bow, or the thunder bow, or many other types of bows that have been made for the rebel lineup or whatnot, they don't have triggers in them, but that's something I could pretty much guarantee that's something worth accepting. Especially if you're a big bow user. I don't typically use bows, I mainly just stick to the actual, well, firearms and whatnot, but the main point is that there's just a lot of things around it that I just don't really like. Of course, if I could just become a head worker of Nerf itself and start working with them, then the first thing that I would do is that I would eliminate all usages of non-trigger based blasters because that's an asset that's worth keeping. But non-trigger blasters themselves, manually operated or not, on its flywheel system or ones that don't have a flywheel system, or smart air restrictor, it's still worth noting that non-trigger based blasters are just a sucky way of putting together the pieces on the battlefield. You will definitely need a trigger when it comes to aiming at your enemies for one. Because a lot of bow blaze blasters, they can really react with a lot of force whenever you let go of the string of the blasters themselves because it shakes a little bit because of involuntary force based on the jerking of how hard the plastic itself hits the air restrictor itself. The plunger too basically just whoosh, and you feel an involuntary jerk, jerking of your arm right there. But that's only because of how much force is being distributed from the plunger to the dart itself. So it can propulse out of the barrel or barrels and fly out towards your enemies. That's kind of a process that I find really sketchy in a way. I don't really like it. So that's just one thing I would like to mention here that would be kind of negative, but other than that, there's going to be a lot of other things that I would also want to talk about here. So if you want to see more, go down to my channel. Make sure that you like, subscribe, comment, follow me on social media, and stay on the Hollywood side. 